Welcome to another Spotlight video where we walk you through a Spotlight figure from your textbook. This video walks you through the heart, internal anatomy, and blood flow Spotlight found in Chapter 12. After watching this video, you should be able to describe blood flow through the heart, along with the heart's major anatomical landmarks. Did you know that congenital heart defects are a leading killer in children? Knowing how the heart works is crucial to understanding diseases of the heart. This is important both clinically and in everyday life. The heart is a pump with four chambers that receive and then propel blood away from the heart, as well as valves that control the direction of blood flow. Deoxygenated blood arrives in the right atrium from both the superior and inferior vena cavae and from the coronary sinus, which drains blood from the heart itself. Notice the blue coloring indicating this blood is deoxygenated. Blood moves from the right atrium into the right ventricle. When the right ventricle contracts to eject blood into the pulmonary trunk, the rising blood pressure closes the tricuspid valve to prevent backflow or regurgitation into the right atrium and also opens the pulmonary valve. Blood then travels along the pulmonary arteries and into the lungs through the pulmonary circuit. After right ventricular contraction, pressure within the pulmonary trunk drops, which closes the pulmonary valve and prevents blood from falling back toward the right ventricle. Blood returns from the pulmonary circuit through the pulmonary veins, into the left atrium, and then into the left ventricle. Notice that this blood is bright red in this diagram indicating it is oxygenated. The left ventricle contracts, closing the mitral valve and opening the aortic valve as blood travels into the aorta. Blood then travels into the systemic circuit. The aortic valve closes as blood falls back after left ventricular contraction. Other important landmarks in this image are the bossa ovalis in the interatrial septum and ligamentum arteriosum found connecting the pulmonary trunk and the aortic arch. These are remnant structures from the fetal heart, which has a different circulatory pattern than was just described. You can also see the interventricular septum that separates the left and right ventricles. In summary, deoxygenated blood returns to the right atrium, travels to the right ventricle, and then into the pulmonary circuit. Blood then returns to the left atrium, travels to the left ventricle, and then into the systemic circuit. The tricuspid and mitral valves prevent regurgitation into the atria from the ventricles, and the pulmonary and aortic valves prevent backflow into the ventricles from the arteries. So what? Why is it important to understand the heart's internal anatomy and blood flow? Well, this information helps us understand congenital heart disease when a baby is born with abnormal heart anatomy. There are many congenital heart defects such as abnormal holes in the heart, malformed valves, or inappropriate connections between the arteries and the heart. One of the most common is a ventricular septal defect, an abnormal opening in the interventricular septum. The left ventricle is more powerful than the right ventricle, so when a heart with a ventricular septal defect beats, some of the left ventricular blood leaks back into the right ventricle. This raises blood volume and pressure in the right side of the heart, causing symptoms such as shortness of breath and in infants, often a failure to eat and grow properly. Fortunately, many ventricular septal defects close on their own as the newborn's heart grows. Severe defects can be corrected with surgery.